You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here with Dasha from the band Next Door to Heaven from Russia. This is the first band I've talked to from Russia, so I'm really excited. Their EP Inside came out on March 25th, and it's really great. You got to go check it out. Dasha, I'm so excited to talk to you. Thanks for taking time to talk to me, and welcome to The Pit. Thank you so much, Derek. Nice to meet you. I'm really excited to hear the rest of this EP that you guys caught that just came out yesterday. Uh, I've heard a couple of songs from it, but I really want to dig into it. This must be really exciting for you guys too. It's your new EP that's happened in the world, being in the state that it is in right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but before we get digging into this EP, I want to kind of learn more about the origins of the band. So how about for yourself? How do you remember learning to sing? When did you start singing? I actually started singing when I was seven. Um, I attended a choir for a long time, uh, for I guess 15 years or so. And when I was 14 years old, I decided to start my own band. It was really weird that time because uh, normally girls of my age and my school were not trying to start their own band. <laughs> and it was pretty hard. But I did it, uh, and after that, for many years, uh, I was in different bands uh, right before we started Next Door to Heaven. So uh, that earlier band that you started when you are 14, I mean, regardless of where you are, what, what gender you are, starting a band at 14 is quite an undertaking. What do you remember, like, what drove you to do that? It's hard to say because I actually started singing when I was seven, as I already said, and singing was my life. So uh, I just wanted to have a band where I could sing songs uh, of different genres I loved because as you probably imagine, <laughs> singing in a choir doesn't mean that you sing songs that you prefer listening to. Uh, that's why I think. And what kind of bands were you listening to that you wanted to kind of emulate in the early days? Different. Uh, I think it always, you know, there is always an influence uh, because when you sing in a choir, you listen to a lot of classical music and so on, and you actually love it. But at the same time, you listen to many other genres. I, I have listened to music from Ella Fitzgerald, uh, to dream theater and uh, there was no such kind of a thing for me like listening to one genre or two genres I have always been a melomaniac I think so what kind of got you into heavier music would you say mm, I don't know <laughs> I just wanted to do that uh, you know there is uh, such a weird, weird thing sometimes uh, even people that prefer listening to pop music, they can start uh, their own band playing heavy metal or something. Um, you know, there's uh, also such a thing with me that uh, I've listened to many different genres and there wasn't such an idea that I only want to play very heavy music. I just wanted to find the genre that will attract me uh, and that will also show who I am. Now let's get into the origins of the band. So, so how do you remember Next Door to Heaven starting to form? Um, as we have already been experienced, both me and Jin, uh, co-founder of our band, uh, we're actually a family, we're spouses, and uh, we met each other, uh, fell in love, got married, and we thought, why not? We should make our own band because we um, had such an experience for years and this time we could do anything we wanted to because uh, Jean is actually a great composer and uh, he does very, very nice uh, arrangements uh, and I write lyrics, so we decided that it's a very nice idea to make our own band. So you've always been given full control over the lyrics? Yep, that's true. And what sorts of subjects do you find that you usually like to go towards with your lyrics? 
anything. Um, it's about personal things like relationship, uh, like different concerns, I don't know, fighting inside one person, uh, different social aspects of life, anything. Anything at all. This seems anything interesting because like with your new EP uh, being called Inside, why did you choose that name for the EP? Uh, it's not that easy <laughs> to explain, but uh, Inside is the main track because it's um, the most melodic and it's uh, the one that explains very well who we are, um, especially for a person that hears us for the first time. Uh, but I think that actually uh, the most important thing uh, on this EP is the song Calibrate, uh, because uh, it shows the fight between uh, a human and machine uh, between anything good and bad. And in general, it is something that inside of me, if you understand what I'm saying, uh, everything that it is on this EP is something that is inside of me. It's a fight. Uh, it's something lyrical at the same time. It's something very heavy, very sad, and something happy because if you already heard flare up uh it's uh, our collab song um it's a positive song it's not sad at all <laughs> but if you hear uh unleash the beasts uh it's a very very heavy thing i found it really interesting as well with the artwork that you chose is you have like a heart that's along with the engine like a car engine right in the moment of ignition so exactly. it's like you're you're trying to say that there's like a like you it seems to me like you kind of put a face to this thing inside of us where we all kind of have like our right brain which is you know love and emotion and then there's this other side of us that is like very much a machine you know it's all about math and logic and adding things up and it has no room for emotion and we need to integrate both those things don't we Exactly, I think so. Uh, I came up with this idea of this artwork uh, a few months before. Uh, we actually found a designer who could <laughs> use this idea and make it real. Um, when I had this idea about this artwork, I thought that it could be great uh, that we use something that will show a machine uh, and something that will show a person. And at the same time, I wanted it to be uh, pretty clear for a person that will see this artwork. I mean, uh, sometimes you see uh, different artworks of different bands and you think, oh, I don't have any idea what it is. <laughs> but this time we wanted to show that what it is, what it is exactly. I like it. It's... It Pulled me into your imagination, I think, a little bit further. How did you discover Liam Gregg to do the artwork? Oh, well, we found him online. Um, sometimes we just find different designers online. Uh, we had an experience of um, working with different designers that were friends of our friends in the beginning of the career, but then we decided to find... Uh, a new one for each new artwork because uh, different works sometimes they need um, another point of view, another person that will actually design it. Now, I like to uh, reminisce over concert memories, and you guys have toured a, quite a bit. I mean, even in your short time being a, a band, you've traveled quite a bit. You've shared the stage with a band called Red. Yeah. Uh, would you like to talk about that sh that show? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Uh, it happened when we released our first EP, uh, first sorry album. Uh, it's called Let's Dream. Uh, back then, we played more, I'd say, alternative metal. Um, and when we were offered to open the show of Red, we were very, very happy because 
we actually find this band one of the most professional ones on stage. Uh, and that's true because when we've seen them live, uh, I was just so impressed by um, vocalist singing live. Uh, I don't think he made any mistake singing live, <laughs> actually. Mm -hmm. uh, that was very, very impressive because you rarely hear things like that. Uh, yes. And we were also happy uh, because audience was not, you know, cruel because sometimes, uh, especially in the beginning of the career, and it was in the beginning, uh, people and audience in general, they can be rude. Uh, they can prefer not to listen to you and just talk or just go away, you know, to the bar <laughs> or somewhere else. But no, it wasn't that case. Uh, we were very surprised by um, everything that happened that night. Uh, and it was uh, very pleasant that even uh, bodyguards of uh, this club, it was a big club, uh, they were saying thank you so much for playing. <laughs> you know, you, you, you rarely hear things like that <laughs> from bodyguards. <laughs> and as well, you guys, in 2019, you shared the stage with Tesseract. Yeah. That must have been pretty memorable as well. Yes, and the audience was also just amazing. Um, we've heard Tesseract playing uh, right after us, and we, we've heard them, of course, when they were um, having a sound check. Um, that was also very, very nice to hear. Um, I think that their music is um, actually very emotional, and um, it's nice to hear a bit live. Uh, the audience was very, very nice to us also. Uh, they uh, asked us to play more songs, even though we didn't plan to. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it would have been a great lineup. It's like, um, you guys don't sound like Tesseract. You sound like Next Door to Heaven. But there is an emotional quality behind your music that I feel really fits with Tesseract's kind of mood as well. So I wish I could have been at that concert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, Tesseract, uh, the funniest thing that we first heard Tesseract after we started our own band. So it's not like kind of our influences, but we just heard them and we found them a great band. With the world being in the way that it is right now, have you found it hard to be creative? No, not really. I think uh, that it is vice versa. Uh, you have right now, if you're a musician, but not only a musician, if you are just a person, a human being, you have a lot of different emotions to cope with every day, especially during everything that's happening uh, last year. Uh, and you have to find uh, something that you love where you can fight with those emotions where you can create something uh, and feel a little bit better. So I think in this case, musicians um, have some advantages. So we can create a lot more music. Um, we can record it while everything in the world is stuck. Um, the only thing that is sad, actually, that we can't play shows right now. That's right, yes. And like I was saying before, you guys have traveled quite a bit. And is, is there any more places that you'd love to go traveling to? Or is there places that you uh, would love to go back and see again? Uh, I can tell that we are not kind of a band that wants to play at the same time all the time. Uh, we love having different experiences, new experience. And uh, I'd say we'd love to play anywhere where we we'll, we'll, would have been welcomed uh, with an audience. So I think anywhere. <laughs> where were some of your favorite places to have gone that you've got, or gone to already? 
if we're talking about Russia, I think that Moscow. Uh, but if we're talking about elsewhere, elsewhere um, I suppose um, San Diego, I guess. You are in uh, St. Petersburg, right? Yeah. And St. Petersburg is kind of like the metal city of Russia, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Uh, it's the city where most musicians, metal and rock, come from. Why do you think? Why do, why do people seem to kind of congregate there? Well, it's easy to explain because uh, St. Petersburg was a capital of Russia before Moscow. It's uh, one of the largest cities in Russia. And the most important thing is that uh, this is the exact city where most uh, famous Russian composers, uh, poets, uh, artists were born or lived. So the atmosphere is, you know, you, you have to feel it. Ah, well, maybe someday I will. <laughs> <laughs> It's very different. Uh, there is a huge difference between St. Petersburg and Moscow, for example. St. Petersburg is uh, closer to Europe, so um, the spirit is a little more European that, than it is in Moscow, for example, because uh, it's around three and a half or four hours uh, by train to go to Helsinki in Finland and uh, four and a half to go to Moscow by, by train for us. So Finland and Helsinki is a little bit closer to us than Moscow and the rest of uh, our country. And Finland is notoriously known as being a heavy metal country and as, as well as Helsinki and all that. <laughs> yes, I actually uh, studied for some time in Helsinki uh, and lived there. I speak Finnish a little bit. So th that was also one of my influences, I guess. <laughs> I, I just know this because I talked to um, James Lascelles from the band Wheel. And they're from Finland. And he was saying that it's crazy in Helsinki. Just everybody's in a metal band. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. Well, I'll put that on my list next to St. Petersburg. Got to go to Helsinki. Got to go to St. Petersburg. <laughs> yeah, it's very convenient. When the borders are open, you just uh, take a train in Helsinki uh, in the city center and you go to St. Petersburg. And when uh, the train arrives, you are already in the city center of St. Petersburg. So very convenient. So from the early years of the band with the music that you guys first put out to the music that you're putting out now, how do you think your sound has evolved? A lot. We started more like a, an alternative metal band. Uh, sometimes we even tried post grunge. Uh, and right now I think we've found ourselves in that kind of sound. We mix uh, progressive music with metalcore Sometimes we are more genty, sometimes we are not at all. Uh, but I think we have now found ourselves in our own sound. I had to agree because this, this EP sounds, sounds really good. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, I kind of have to pick on Gene a little bit here. So most guitarists are happy with six strings. Some guitarists go to seven strings. <laughs> some, some crazy guitarists go to eight strings. But Gene plays a nine-string guitar. Is this just the future? Like, is he going to end up playing a 13-string guitar two albums further down the road? I don't know. Uh, he's the kind of person that uh, wants to try something new always. I mean, uh, when once he had a six-string guitar, then he said, I want a seven-string guitar, then eight-string, and then nine. So I'm not really sure if we won't get... <laughs> a 13 string guitar later on <laughs> <laughs> well it might be his own custom signature model that'd be very cool <laughs> yeah yeah this is a staple question i kind of always ask everyone what advice would you give to someone who's just trying to pursue their dreams if it's really your dream 
And if you are quite serious about that, if it's not something that you just want to achieve because it's kind of an achievement, but it's really your dream, then fight for it. Do everything that's possible. Don't ever give up. Sometimes it will be so hard, you would just want to scream and cry. <laughs> but uh, don't stop. Everything will be all right if it's, if it's true for you. Well said. Very well said. I like that. Is there anything else that you'd like to say to our listeners? Listen to our new EP, Inside. I hope you love it. One of the tracks is our collab with Lord Nelson, ex Mojo. So it's not just a metalcore EP. Uh, well, it is a metalcore EP, but uh, you will also hear some rap there. So I hope you will be pleasantly surprised. And have a nice day. You've been listening to The Peach Pit. I've been here talking with Dasha from the band Next Door to Heaven. Their EP Inside came out on March 25th, and it's really great. You got to go check it out. Dasha, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, and hopefully we'll do it again in the future. Thank you, Derek. The same. Great. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Bye.